Hello, Tommy here again. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about other tools that you need. In the last video, I talked about the saw and the blades and the blade sizes that I recommend. And what I want to talk about today uh, to start with is if you're cutting just outlines like that, then you just need the saw. But if you want to make an internal cut like this, then you need an entry hole for your uh, blade to go through. And to do that, you have to drill a hole. So these are the drills that I started with. I started out with a corded saw like this one, not this one, but one like it. Then I moved up to a cordless and I was able to carry with me. And then as I got more intricate on the patterns, I needed to drill smaller holes uh, because I didn't have room for the larger drill, but I was using a 1 8 most of the time. Or, or a 7.64. So I'm, I'll move to a Dremel. Now the problem with a Dremel, uh, this is a single speed, it's not variable, and it's 30,000 RPM. So you get a small bit like this in there, and you, you try to drill uh, uh, some heavy, hard, thick wood like oak, uh, you can burn up a bit, and I did burn some up. So then I discovered this, it's called a scroller's drill. It's uh, made and uh, sold by Seiko, which is a company here in Rockwall, Texas. They sell a lot of other uh, scroller accessories and supplies, as well as they sell uh, uh, scroll saws and other woodworking tools. Uh, they sell pretty, pretty quality stuff, uh, and this is what I use exclusively. I, bought, I paid more for this than I paid for my saw. I think uh, I paid $125 for my saw, and I paid like $140, $150 for this. Uh, but for me, so far, it's been worth it. I'm glad that I bought it. And to show you uh, why I, I went to smaller drills, uh, drill bits, is I have this pattern I set up, and I drill these two holes with the 1 8, which is this largest bit. And that's what I was using mostly. That's fine out here in this area. But you can see how it raises the edge where it drilled. Uh, like I say, that doesn't matter right here, but you get in a small, tight spot. It, it messes up the pattern next to your line. If you get too close, it actually makes it hard to cut and cut it properly. Most of the time you can cover it, you can't tell it's there, but it's still uh, bothersome. And it, in a small area like this, it can actually mess up your pattern. So these two holes I drilled with a 1 16th, which is half the size. Now, you don't have to go down that much, but those are uh, sizes that are more common. Uh, so, the 1 16th will fit blades from size 1 and 3 and 5. Uh, you can even get a 5 through 1 32nd, which is the other size I use, but it's a little more difficult that you can do it. I do have, I have cut some that had small enough internal cuts that I had to use uh, the half the size blade of that in order to make my entry hole. And if you're doing uh, uh, a relief cut, you want you don't want a very big hole because the hole is, I think the hole on this one was right here. Uh, but the hole is still going to be visible unless you uh, disguise it somehow. So you want as small a hole as possible in something like that. And that's what I use these small uh, drill bits for. And then you have to use a small blade. But with a, with a 1 16th on this little drill, I can drill every one of these holes and I'd have to change the bit. Uh, that, this, this one wouldn't require a 1 32nd, but the 1 16th was really required right there. So if you get down into the smaller drill bits, they change the size designations on them. They don't necessarily go by decimals because the decimals get rather hard to keep up with as it gets smaller, so they, they came up with a numbering system, and I bought this little set from a Mike's Hardware shop, and it's a Flying Dutchman, which also makes the, the uh, blades that I use for the saw, and this is a number 68, and a number 68 is roughly equivalent, equivalent to a 132nd. A 68 is 0 0.031 inches, whereas a 132nd, I mean a 1 16th, 
is 0 0.0625. So it's pretty close to a half. It's pretty close to what a 132nd would be. Uh, you go to his website and I'll put a link. Uh, he has a chart with these drill size numbers, the, the diameter in inches and millimeters, and the length of the bit. Uh, so that's what I use. And again, I recommend a 16th for almost everything. That'll cover probably 90% of what you cut. I don't use the 32nd very often, but when I do, it's, it's really needed. So, if you think this information is going to be helpful to you, and if you're learning anything from this, well, please hit the subscribe button and I'll continue to try to give you more information. For now, I'm going to uh, move this stuff and we'll be back in a minute and I'll show you some other things uh, that would be helpful making your projects. So, here we are. I want to talk about other tools that you can use to help with your projects. Uh, most of these aren't absolutely necessities. Some of them just nearly are, but uh, these aren't tools that you actually use to cut. It's just usually for finishing or preparing to do the job. <clears throat> well, when you, when you get your uh, stock for your project, wherever you get it, most most of the stock that you buy for a scroll saw is already finished to 150 grit, is sanded to 150 grit. So there's not a lot of finished sanding you need to do on an on a area like that. Uh, your main work's going to be in two places. Uh, around the edges, where your scroll saw will leave some fuzzies, uh, maybe some debris or, or various things in there you need to clean out a little bit, especially in little tight spots. And so I have uh, a little set of jeweler's files. Uh, my wife did uh, wire jewelry and she had these little files. There's a flat one, a triangular one, and a round one. And I use the flat one a lot. In these areas, it gets the fuzzies off, it gets debris out. You can really clean out that little area right there. Uh, those aren't necessary, they're just very helpful. And then when you put a project like this together, you have these joints. And uh, I always try to cut everything a little bit long. And so you'll have, uh, I like for this to be sticking out a little bit, for this to be sticking out a little bit. Then I can take it to my belt disc sander. I have a belt disc sander on, the, on my bench back here. And I take it and I can sand those down smooth. Do the same thing on the top. And then I can use uh, this sander too for, to do the same thing, to do a little finishing. And the final finish I'll usually do with hand sandpaper. Not a sanding block or just a block of wood or just my hand and some sandpaper. But that's, uh, those things are really needed to uh, polish off your, your projects. And especially areas like this, uh, you got this bottom piece sticks through right here and it's glued. Uh, try to keep those flush. And I do that by making them extra long and sanding them down to match. Uh, if that's another thing we'll cover if we do a project like this I'll show you as you cut it you need to be aware of that as you're cutting so you can plan ahead on those sort of things so some of the other things uh, that you will need or you could use are a little bit more mundane for instance you get your patterns usually you get them on a sheet of paper eight and a half by eleven well you got to cut them out well you need a pair of scissors or, or something like that to uh, cut that out and at the same time you have to acquire those patterns. Uh, I kind of include that in this section of things you need to do the job. Uh, if you're watching this and you're watching it either on a, a, a computer, a phone, or a tablet, so you have access to the internet, you can download file, uh, patterns digitally, then you're going to have to be able to print them out. Also like having a scanner or a, a copier so that you can copy patterns out of, you buy a pattern book or various things like that. Those aren't absolute necessities, but they're things you can, you can use. And in, in, in uh, simple patterns, you can actually trace them with some tracer paper, to carbon paper. Uh, I do that on big projects, but I've never done it on scroll saw. Uh, I print all of my patterns. So another thing that I use, you wouldn't think much for being scroll saw, scroll saw work, uh, is an object like this it has a, uh, a base. You can cut that base on the scroll saw. And I have cut them on the scroll saw. But I cut that one on a table saw. 
I like the, the crispness and the, the straightness of it. Uh, even a piece like this, if I need to trim this off, I would use a, a table saw. And I have a, uh, uh, a sled that I use on my crosscut sled that I use to keep things straight. So I use a table saw for that. I also use a table saw to cut down stock. If you have, uh, like, you can buy different kinds of plywoods. I'll cut them down on the table saw to pieces small enough for whatever patterns I want to use. And when you're dealing with the power tools, you need to be aware of uh, dust collection, uh, dust mask, and eye protection. You don't have to worry about that with a scroll saw so much, but if you do use a table saw, uh, hopefully you know about the safety procedures. Now, that's something to be aware of. And so then, when you cut a piece like this, and I have to glue it together, there's uh, five pieces plus the liner, and there's four pieces of the liner. Uh, that's mahogany, and I think this is poplar. This outside part of it is poplar, and that's mahogany. And that's on there so you can have this uh, contrast in there in the name and the, and the letters. So to put that together now, you're going to have to glue it. Use, I just use wood glue, but you're going to have to have some clamps to do your projects like that. And I have uh, three or four different kinds of clamps here. I do other woodworking not just scroll saw. So I, I do have some other tools. Uh, these are some of the clamps that I use. Uh, and I have some others. but I have a small collection of clamps compared to most woodworkers. But uh, these will be pretty necessary for an object like that. Uh, and like I put the back on this, of course you could lay that down and put a book on it or something. There are other ways uh, other ways around that, but uh, I find clamps invaluable in all of my work, whether it's uh, to glue things together or just to hold something together while I'm working on it. So, but yeah, to do a job like this, I use these clamps. Uh, these, I got four of these, and I use these very clamps to put this box together. So that's something else that I guess you could get by without. I wouldn't call them essential, but uh, to me, they're almost essential. For the work I do, I couldn't make some of the projects without them. So that pretty well covers uh, a lot of the other things that I use. There's not many other things that would be something very oddball from time to time, but basically these are the things I use on most of my projects. So if this has helped to you, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, which I'm hoping to be about uh, the stock, the wood or whatever you want to make your projects out of. So thank you for watching.